Guys, let's talk Patty the Batty. And I'm going to tell you, and as clear as I know how to speak up front, I'm going to discuss Patty the Batty for one reason. I'm going to put his name in what's known as a thumbnail, and I'm going to see how many people click on it. I am told that Patty the Batty is a big deal. I am told that Patty the Batty is a big star. I'm told that Patty the Batty is really good at fighting. I don't dispute any of those. I can't confirm them. I don't know Patty the Batty. I hear the name all the time, and it turns out the Batty is a nickname. It's not his last name. His first name is Patty, and then they call him is Patty the Batty, whatever, the Macho Man, whatever. I'm in, and I'm very open to giving him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm going to know right now, and I will tell you right now, based solely on how many of you click on the thumbnail that say Patty the Batty, will solely decide if I ever discuss him again. Now that I've disclosed up front what my intention is, let's talk Patty. So, comes from Europe. Many people have made a connection between Patty and Connor. They're not from the same gym, which I falsely believed. I'm only going to tell you that in case you falsely believe that John Cavanaugh trains Patty or that he's from the straight blast gym system. Not true. Patty has even called Connor out. Everybody called Connor out, right? No surprise there. But Patty has called Connor out. He's coming in with big expectations. People are very interested in this guy. I haven't got to see him fight, and I did a level of research before sitting down and bringing him to you guys. I could only find still photos. He's got an interesting haircut. By interesting haircut, I mean it's terrible. But if he wins, maybe that'll be cool over time, right? Chuck Liddell used to have a mohawk. It was weird until it wasn't. Let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And he's won some regional scene. I know that because, again, in the still photos that I Google searched, popped up, had a belt over his shoulder. The reason I bring in Patty the Batty is when you're in that spot and Patty, without even knowing him, is a hardworking guy who got into a very tough industry that required a ton of work and sacrifice and now he's being given his opportunity with a lot of eyes on him. And many ways, that's what everybody's dream is. The other side of the coin is it creates a pressure. Now, sports guys will talk about this and use this word until they're blue in the face. None of them explain to you, the audience, what it matters to have pressure. What is the difference if you feel pressure or if you feel more pressure than your opponent? I'm sure both of you half naked with a mouthpiece and four ounce gloves on on TV have a level of pressure. Who has more pressure? Why is this debated and why does it matter? I will tell you, pressure creates stress, which creates fatigue. That is the only reason that pressure matters. In other sports, pressure will sharpen you because it's very short. You're throwing horseshoes. You're shooting free throws. Some of that pressure, they'll give an athlete credit. He's got ice running through his veins. He was able to deal with pressure. Well, it's really not the same thing as you're in an ass-whipping contest, completely exhausted with another trained killer coming at you. It's different. And that's where fatigue matters so much, which is where the stress that's created from pressure becomes relevant. How does Patty deal with it? How do you make things small? How do you block out the noise? These, in large part, are not things that you get better with. In large part, there is a small part where experience can play in, where you do this enough, where you visualize. In large part, you're born that way. Can you deal with it or can't you? And you may not like that answer. By the way, when you're confronted with that, regardless of what you think it is, you may not like that answer. And there's not a whole lot you can do with it. I don't think that Patty knows. I imagine if people ask Patty today, and I imagine this will come up on press week because the media is extremely uncreative and that's a very uncreative answer. So it would be par for the course within the MMA media space. He'll say it's no big deal. It's another day. There's likely things to support that. The reduction in audience size, by example, right? You'll remember... The gentleman who came in and fought Sean O'Malley. Not only does Chris get a ton of credit because that was an awesome and gutsy performance against a badass like O'Malley, but it was televised in a sold-out arena. There's more on it. So when I talk about you're born one way or the other, Chris can be very proud or very lucky, very thankful. He deals with pressure very well. It's not going to ever get much worse than what he was up against. But now it's Patty's turn. 
what does that audience and that size do? What does his opponent do? But moreover, how can he go out there and compete with himself? Because you must stay relaxed to an extent. Announcers, as much as they will talk about pressure, but never explain to the audience why it matters. I'll tell you why they don't do it. It's not because they're condescending or take for... They don't know what the hell they're saying. They heard some other announcer say it, and they threw out one of these buzzwords, pressure. That's why it matters. Pressure creates a stress. Stress creates a chemical in your brain released to your body. It's very scientific that causes a fatigue. And there's nothing that you can have on your side more than lungs, than a good gas tank. When you talk about a guy, when you talk to a guy and he's confident, by the way, an athlete who is truly confident does not believe he has the skills to beat the person in front of him. Confidence only comes from one thing, which believes that you have the conditioning to outlast your opponent. A combat athlete's biggest fear is not losing. His biggest fear is exhaustion. That he will get to a point of fatigue that he can no longer defend himself. That he can't finish the match. That is his single biggest fear. That is what he will be thinking about in the locker room. That's what he will think about every day that he's preparing twice a day. That is what he will think about as Bruce Buffer is doing the announcement. Can I hold up? How hard can I go? Is that going to be hard enough? And more importantly, I don't want to go so hard that I cannot defend myself. That is the biggest battle that he will have, which ties back to why I'm talking about the relevance to pressure, creating a stress, creating a fatigue. The punches and the kicks, man, they're all good at them. The purple belt and the brown belt and the black belt, man, they all got them. Who can go harder than who longer? Who can answer that bell and come out harder when it's tough? It's always easy in the first round. It's easy to walk out to the cage, hug your corner, get some Vaseline put on your face. How are you going to feel in the third round? How are you going to feel in the last minute? What do you have left? Those are the questions that an athlete asks himself, at least a combat athlete. Combat athlete, biggest fear is not losing. His biggest fear is reaching exhaustion and not being able to finish the match. 